The regular session of the City Council of the City of Pleasant, Texas will now come to order. I will, we will have the invocation followed by the pledge, and the invocation will be by Reverend Jones of the Second Baptist Church. Yeah. Here we offer a word of prayer. Father in heaven, we thank thee for the many blessings of life that is still before us. We thank thee for things being as well as they are. Thank thee for the entering into a brand new year. We thank thee for the council and for the city of Pleasanton and our surrounding counties for the goals in which we have met during our last year. Maybe some of the goals we didn't meet, but we pray that you will teach us to not be despondent, but press toward the mark of the high calling in Jesus Christ. Pray that you will bless the council, and most especially the mayor and his followers, and give us fellowship. We pray for the law and force officers, keep them safe. We pray for the judges and pray for our school district, keep our children safe from all hurt, harm, and danger. We pray that you will continue to lead us from one degree of grace to another. Lead us that we might be led and teach us that we may be taught. Bless us in our uprising, our downsetting, our labor and our leisure, our laughter and in our tears. Until that day we shall stand before Jesus where there is no sunset and no dawning. Amen. 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 And, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, under God indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please be seated. Thank you, Reverend Jones. Item number three is a roll call. Ms. Israel. Here. Mr. Science. Here. Mr. Best. Here. Mr. Garza. Here. Ms. Pacifica. Here. Mr. Gagos. Here. All members are present. Item number four is consent agenda. Uh, item number A is approval of the minutes of the workshop session of January 15, 2015. Item number B is approval of the minutes of the regular session of January 15, 2015. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Bess. I move to approve consent agenda items A and B. Second. Second. Been moved and seconded to approve consent agenda items number A and B. Any discussion? If none will proceed to the vote. Those in favor of the motion, please raise your right hand. Opposed, same sign. Consent agenda is approved. Item number five is ordinances and resolutions. Item A is second reading and adoption of ordinance number 15-1128, revising the city park ordinance by adopting an ordinance for the operation of the city park pool and city sports complex. And as soon as I find it, I'll read the caption. Anybody's got the page number. Oh, I got it here. It's on page 15 of the agenda packet. Ordinance number 15-1128 is an ordinance of the City Council of the City of Pleasant, Texas, repealing and replacing ordinance number 1059-1152 and 12-1052 of the Pleasant and Code of Ordinances, providing rules and regulations, setting fees, providing a penalty clause, providing a conflict clause, and providing an effective date for the operation of the city park, the city pool, and the city sports complex. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Best. I move to approve an ordinance of the City Council of the City of Pleasanton, Texas, repealing and replacing ordinances. One. You have to read the, not the caption. Okay. The, uh... Correction. <coughs> okay. I move. Uh, to adopt ordinance number 15 11 28 revising the parks ordinance by adopting an ordinance for the operation of the city park city pool and city sports complex second so moved and seconded to adopt an ordinance number 15 dash 11 28 revising the city park the parks ordinance by adopting an ordinance for the operation of the city park <coughs> city pool and city sports complex all those in favor of the motion please raise your right hand Post same sign, ordinance is adopted. Item number B is reading and adoption of ordinance number 15-1129, establishing and amending the official city map of the city of Pleasant Pleasanton. And ordinance number 15-1129 is an ordinance of the city council of the city of Pleasant, Texas, declaring and establishing an official city map by declaring the city corporate limits and the extraterritorial extra jurisdiction boundaries of the city of Pleasanton, Texas, amending and replacing all maps previously approved providing for relief, providing for a savings clause, and declaring an emergency. Mayor. Ms. Israel. Uh, yes, I'd like to make a motion 
to adopt ordinance number 151129 establishing and amending the official city map of the city of Pleasanton, Texas. Second. We moved and seconded to adopt ordinance number 16 1129 establishing and amending the official city map of the city of Pleasanton. All those in favor of the motion, please raise your right hand. So, Mr. Gagos. If I can, I have a question. Is this including the extension of the ETJ? Yes. The two mile radius? It's in the. It's in the uh, one yeah, mile. It's yes. the green outline above one the purple radius. city limits. One mile. That's one mile. Yes, sir. No discussion. We'll proceed to the vote. All those in favor of the ordinance, please raise your right hand. Post same sign. When it says adopted. <laughs> Item C is reading, first reading, of ordinance number 15 1130, declaring new voting districts as a result of recent annexations. And ordinance number 15. Dash 1130 is an ordinance of the City Council of the City of Pleasanton, Texas, adopting district boundaries, repealing ordinances, and resolutions in conflict. First reading. I have a question. Mr. Gaios. Has this been cleared through the uh, judicial system and all of that? It's been cleared through our city Mr. attorney. The changes to the map are in the middle of District 1 there, the incorporation of Bonita 2, which is a voluntary annexation. It's right in the middle of the district. The also the remaining portion of the golf course property that was a voluntary annexation, which was on the <coughs> extreme boundary of District 3. And the recent uh, annexation uh, on the west side of the city by the Council of Liberty, Eileen, and Hayden in that area. And after consultation with the city attorney, he recommended and he advised uh, what the staff's recommendation was, and that was to include those areas, which are about 89 properties within District 6 at this time. I might add, you'll see some white areas in that portion. Those four properties had ag exemptions and they were offered non-annexation agreements and they all signed them. So that's why you see that white portion in the middle, not in the shade of purple. So then this map is officially ready to be adopted at the next reading? Correct. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you. I have a question. Mr. Garza. Uh, what is the percentage of population with this? At this time, we do not have those figures. There's 89 properties. There was approximately 78 or so homes on those properties. And if you look at 2.7 or you examine the 2.7 per capita per household as by the U.S. Census, in 2010, then you know it brings you to a number of times two. That particular district. Uh, I don't have those numbers. The city secretary may have them, uh, but I don't have those numbers. We don't have those numbers at this time. If you'd like us to bring them to the next meeting, we certainly would. Thank you. Yes, sir. All right. Move on to item D, which is reading and adoption of ordinance number 15-1131, ordering the general election to be held on May 9, 2015. Ordinance number 15-1131 is an ordinance of the City Council of the City of Pleasanton, Texas, ordering the general election to be held on May 9, 2015, for the purpose of electing the mayor, the council members for District 4, 5, and 6, establishing the time and place, and early voting, and declaring an emergency. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Best. <clears throat> Mr. Mayor, I move to adopt ordinance number 15 1131, ordering the general election to be held on May 9th, 2015. Second. Moved and seconded to adopt ordinance number 15 1131, ordering the general election to be held on May 9th, 2015. There is no discussion. We'll proceed to the vote. I have a question. Mr. Gagos. Okay. Uh... I'm getting to it. Okay. Each position that's up for re-election is for a two-year term. That's what we have right now is two-year terms. Right. Okay. If it changes, 
they go to two, three year terms. How is that going to affect this ordinance? Or it's it not. Amended. It would have to be amended or have to have an ordinance to replace it. But as of now, we have to go by what we currently have in its two year term. Yeah, I found it says the mayor and council member for district four, five, and six, uh, with each serving a two year term. So if uh, we adopt this ordinance and the three two year term passes, then the council's going to have to amend, Correct. amend the ordinance. Have to exactly. either amend the ordinance or, or have an ordinance that would replace this one. But we can only go off of what we currently have. And, and yeah, but this ordinance is saying they're just elected for a two-year term. Right. How can you change that? By amending an ordinance, we've we've done it you know, not a whole lot of times, but we have amended ordinances. Bobby, do you have an answer? Mr. Maldonado, will you clarify that we can amend an ordinance or have another ordinance that will repeal or replace an ordinance that's already in existence? Mr. Gallegos was wondering, and I'm, I'll try to speak for you because I know your voice is weak. What he's asking is in the ordinance that we're about to uh, vote on, <coughs> it's saying that there is two-year terms for those positions that the election will be held for in May. He's saying what if there's a change to the city charter and changes it to some different amount, a uh, number of years. <coughs> How does that affect this? My answer was we'll either amend this ordinance or replace or repeal it. That's true because we don't know what's yet to occur in the future. So you're, you're right. It's whatever it is now, and if it changes, then we change the ordinance. I mean, so then if, if this is approved and they're elected to two-year terms, it's a possibility they can have a three-year term. If we're talking about uh, a, a charter amendment, the answer would be yes. So it can change between, okay. Thank you, Mayor. Any other questions? If none, we'll proceed to the vote. All those in favor of the ordinance, please raise your right hand. Both same sign. Ordinance is adopted. Item number six is citizen's comments. If you're a citizen of or a taxpayer to the city of Pleasanton, you may speak at this time. Please keep your comments to three minutes. Know that it cannot be about an uh, item on the agenda. And know that staff and council may not comment. Okay. And nobody signed up. So if there's none, we'll move on to number seven, uh, departmental reports. We'll have our public works director's report. This evening, Mayor, <laughs> departmental report will be by the, by the finance director as we advised the council at the last meeting. We'll begin to give you a financial report at the end of each quarter. This will be a report by Mrs. Martinez for the ending first fiscal quarter, which was uh, December 31st of 2014. <clears throat> All other reports are as submitted, and we'll move to the manager's message and the mayor's message from that point. Okay. Good evening, Council Mayor. Good evening. Good evening. All our water wells are at 100%. Um, our utilities department, utilities department crews uh, began work on Cynthia Drive. Uh, they're replacing all the poly services with the copper tubing uh, of the upcoming CIPs. On our water main project, Fonseca Construction began the first water line bore at Yellowstone and Highway 4 476. Uh, they have bored four, uh, 75 feet of 24-inch casing and are waiting on the uh, carrier pipe to be delivered tomorrow. Their next scheduled board will be at the railroad crossing on McGuffin Road near the uh, Country Club entrance. <clears throat> Landmark, uh, the water tower contractor, poured the uh, tower foundation last week, <coughs> and last night they completed the installation of that 80-foot tower, uh, crane tower. <coughs> this will now allow them to begin the construction and installation of the water tower's pedestal. Uh, our wastewater plant crews uh, continue to clean and televise and troubleshoot the sewer line at Bryant and Goodwin, uh, they discovered a, a manhole that wasn't there and was was allowed, uh, gave us the access. Uh, they were able to pinpoint the area needed needing repairs. Uh, we estimated approximately a 60-foot point repair in the middle of the intersection of Goodwin and Bryant, which will require another lane closure. We're waiting on coordinating with Tex on that. The Parks Department continues the ground maintenance to all public buildings and, and ball fields. Uh, they have rehabbed the interior of all of the ball fields at the sports complex. Uh, this consists of applying a field conditioner made up of prospect clay for managing moisture, improving drainage, and keeping the uh, surfaces safe and, <coughs> and playable by resisting compaction. Also, routine maintenance repairs to the playscape were, all, were also done, uh, which consisted of mainly loose bolts and uh, nuts and bolts. Crews have also completed the restoration of the security lighting to the concession stand and restrooms at the sports complex. 
we're still waiting on prices for for a man lift rental to install the backstop netting at the River Park soccer field. Our street department completed several service orders and as weather permitted continues to work on a backlog of potholes repairs. Uh, they have been working on resolving issues with the drainage culvert that crosses Humble Camp Road. Uh, the old concrete drain was uh, has deteriorated and come apart. So the crews have set a temporary steel plate over the crossing until uh, we can we're, we're going to replace it with a 40-foot section of galvanized corrugated pipe. Please, Mayor. Any questions, Mr. Wizard? Mayor? Ms. Israel. Uh, yeah, what portion of Bryant Street is that at? The... On Bryant Street, right, yeah. there, right there in the corner of Goodwin uh, towards Green Lawn. That middle section oh, between okay. Green Lawn and, and uh, Bryant on Goodwin. Oh, okay. There'll be a 60-foot repair that we're going to have to do from the corner over to that manhole that's right in the center of that intersection. Yeah. Well, at least I'll have a turning lane. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we'll have a turning lane. <laughs> Thank you. Any okay. questions? Thank you, Mr. Wizard. Mayor, Council, um, I'm going to report to you the first quarter financial report for the City of Pleasanton. Um, since we're reporting from October to December, the, what's good is considered good is if revenue exceeds 25% and if expenditures are below 25% because that gives you a profit. So we want to see a profit. So I consider ourselves doing well for the general fund. Uh, we're at 38.97% above our projected revenue. Our budget for um, general fund is eight million seven forty eight five thirty one ninety four and we've collected three million four <coughs> nine five ninety seven which gives us the thirty eight point ninety seven. The expenditures our budget is eight million seven two six six ninety eight ninety four and we've spent one million uh seven one seven one forty three sixty one we're at 20.36%. So again, we're above, I mean, we're below 25% in our expenditures and we're above 25% in our revenue. Um, so if you, you'll look at the bottom, the bottom line is we're showing a, a profit so far. Of course, we're nonprofit, but I'm just saying that we have a surplus instead of a deficit of 1,632,477.09. In the utility fund, um, we're below the 25% there in the revenue account. It's very difficult to project based on a first quarter what your revenue is going to be in utility fund, particularly since this has been a season uh, full of rain. We've just had so much rain, so our revenue is down so far. You see that you see that more in the summer months where the increases in the water revenue occur. So again, it's 21.58% in the utility fund in terms of revenue and 18.90 in the expenditures. Uh, we've held off on some expenditures, so so far we're doing, we, we tend to be more conservative in our first quarter anyway, so we're doing very well in the utility fund. And um, I would like to thank uh, Johnny Weezar and Chief Sanchez. They have the two largest <coughs> departments and they always do well. So they do an exceptional job when it comes to budgeting as well as the other departments. But I'd like to particularly thank Johnny Weezar and Chief Sanchez. Any questions? Questions for Mr. Mar Ms. Martinez? Mr. Mayor? Mr. Best. Just a comment. I, I truly appreciate this snapshot. It really uh, gives us a lot of valuable information and gives us, uh, I think, just what we need to know. It's uh, greatly appreciated. Thank you. Questions or comments from Ms. Martinez? Thank you, Ms. Martinez. Mm -hmm. Move on to uh, item number eight, city manager's message. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Good evening. I would just kind of like to piggyback on what Mrs. Martinez said. We can't thank all the departments enough, but when you have a good portion of the budget housed under the police department and the public works department, which includes streets, parks, water, and wastewater, uh, those two gentlemen are principally responsible for some of what you heard tonight, and uh, I commend them as well. Uh, 
it, it, it's difficult to, to manage so many moving parts at once and, and keep your eye on the number one thing. It's all about being prudent with our citizens' funds. You know, I can, you know. Our message tonight starts with CIP planning. I'll just be a little bit redundant uh, over what you're going to hear a little later. Just to remind you, we issued uh, $4 million in debt approximately 19 months ago to begin a street reconstruction and street rehabilitation program. It's been an all-encompassing project to this point with, with bore samples taken on some of the larger streets, uh, waiting for the analysis of those bore samples and what kind of soil we have under those streets to come back uh, based on the fact that we were asking for three recommendations on how those streets could be reconstructed. Uh, you'll have a presentation from Mr. Metting and Mr. Cope with Klein and Cope Engineering tonight at the point of where we're at and that is to move to final design and, and uh, get to go to bid uh, within the next 30 to 35 days. Uh, we have four recommended streets that will be in front of you. Those streets really are encompassed based on several criteria. Number one, the condition of the roads, and number two, what kind of traffic travels on those roads and how important are they to all the citizens of the city. Thoroughfare, street, street traffic, uh, school traffic, and so on. Also might mention uh, the CIP planning continues on the uh, water utility project out in front of some of the things that Mr. Weezar said a few minutes ago. We continue to look at some of the things that are necessary to complete that project, the securing of several easements. Also, we've been analyzing the, the uh, future pressures off of that system in some of the other areas of town, principally in the Crown Hill, Edge Hill area, everything back north of Bensdale as well as the east portion of town around 1st Street and all of, all of the uh, old North Town uh, city as we knew it. Uh, that includes everything from 4th through 8th, Crockett, Martin, all of those roads. Uh, this is in an effort to not only keep that line moving with fresh water, but also to continue to take the leverage off the of main yard. Main yard pumps about 65 to 70 percent of the production in the city. That will take a huge portion. It will also give us uh, some redundancy we've never had, and that's in the portions of those, those areas of town I mentioned before. If something were to happen, it's a matter of uh, uh, adjusting some valves and continuing uh, 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 constant water service to our customers. We're also looking at some of the things we need to do to adjust those pressures in, the, uh, in reference to pressure <laughs> reducing valves, and also what we can do in case uh, for instance, Northtown's well goes down. Northtown is usually non-functional at that point, and there's a lot of leverage on Main Yard. We're looking at um, an electrically operated valve that would open fill the tank at Northtown at the same time the well comes on. That way, if the well ever goes down, we can keep the Northtown pump station <coughs> in the ground storage tank for a while. I commend Mr. Metting, Mr. Woodfar, and Mr. Cope because this is an all-encompassing project, and not too often do you see a city our size take on something like this, let alone the major portion of the project be designed with folks in-house as well as the folks that are going to put it in the ground in-house. And I commend everyone's efforts on that. Budget items and capital expenditures, I'll just mention a couple of things. We have a couple of more items that we want to put in front of council. There were two uh, dump trucks that were in this year's budget. Uh, Mr. Weezar has taken uh, the lead on that and we're going to uh, go out to bid. Uh, fairly quickly, we're going to do a, do a bid asking for some used dump trucks. Based on the fact these dump trucks don't run every day, they don't run constantly every day, uh, we feel like we can um, save the citizens and save the city uh, quite a bit of money in reference to some used vehicles, and we'll be going to bid on that. Obviously, the maps were in front of you this evening. Uh, I won't uh, be redundant there. Uh, the financial reporting. Um, Helen will continue to do that at the end of each quarter. This becomes an ever important uh, uh, initiative for the administrative staff as well as those who manage their budgets with the uh, decrease in oil prices. Uh, we're monitoring everything almost on a daily basis that anything that has to do with the residual of those oil prices, there will be no doubt that we will have some impact. Uh, right now, uh, we're trying to gauge what that impact is, and, and we're trying to uh, uh, do what we need to do to be prudent with budget. Ordinances, I'll just mention that the 
uh, ordinance that was directed by council that a draft was placed in front of you all at the last meeting about sex offenders within a certain amount of feet of places where children gather. Uh, Mr. Maldonado has found some appellate court rulings uh, that may call into conflict some of the things we wanted to accomplish with that ordinance, but we will continue to look at those appellate court rulings and eating rulings that will come down in the near future and hopefully come back to council with a recommendation on where we should go with that ordinance. We just wanted to let you know we hadn't forgot about it. It's not That's not why it's not on the agenda tonight, but with those appellate court rulings in front of us, we want to wait and see how it goes. Uh, that's our message this evening, Mayor. I'll stand for any questions. Any questions for Mr. Pearson? Mr. Pearson? Yes, sir. The ordinance, is that pretty much specific to the landlords? Is that the bit? Uh, that's a portion of it, but um, I think if I'm not mistaken, and correct me if I'm wrong, Mr. Malinato, the Fifth Circuit Court out of New Orleans ruled that sex offenders have a right to challenge any of these ordinances at this point based on distances and landlords as well. That's right, but uh, what you're talking about, Mr. Best, you and I discussed that at the last meeting. And you had indicated that you were okay with sure. just focusing on the sex offenders and not the landlords. So right. if we remove that language, we're good. Okay. And, and I suggested to Mr. Pearson that it's because you were the proponent of this ordinance, um, removing that language would make it an acceptable ordinance. Sure. Any questions for Mr. Pearson? Thank you, Mr. Pearson. Thank you. Item number nine, uh, the only announcement I have is uh, Mr. Uh, Wernken resigned from the Housing Authority Board due to his commitment with the school board. But Ms. Uh, Julia Garcia, who's the director of the Coastal Bend College Pleasanton Campus, has agreed to fill his spot. So uh, I'll get with you all tomorrow on, on getting that done. I don't return his report on the Addis Coast County Appraisal District by the City Representative, Mr. Larry Pippen. <clears throat> City manager and your staff. Uh, thank you for appointing me to this great position. I'm, I'm going to enjoy it. Uh, so far, I had my first meeting. Uh, it was quite intriguing. Looking forward to the balance of it. Uh, <coughs> but I was given no, no guidance by the city council about what do you want me to look for or what do you want me to do. Uh, Cindy informed me about the semi monthly reports which will be given to you. I think I gave you five different reports to look at. Uh, is this satisfactory by you, Mayor, and the Council? Uh, do you want me to delete that and just give you the uh, appraiser's report, a uh, copy of the minutes, uh, and anything else you wish for me to do? Well, that's a good point. We haven't really given you any kind of specific tasks, so <laughs> okay. uh, I don't know. I kind of like seeing it. I don't know if that's a, if it's hard for you to compile <coughs> that. If it's not, uh, I wouldn't mind seeing it. Council? Thoughts? I think it's I prefer important. It. Yeah. Mayor, uh, yeah, I've got a couple of things um, that I would just like. I love seeing the reports. I think that's awesome. I'm really appreciative of them. Um, anything that uh, that you feel is interest to the council and to the citizens of Pleasanton and the city itself during meetings, I would like you just to report to us on those things. And there are questions um, that uh, we may have that we would like to bring to you, okay. to have you bring to the board and have a discussion about. And um, I think, I'm not real sure to the extent that that was done in the past, but I would like to <coughs> uh, be able to have the ability to have either Cindy mm -hmm. send you questions and then you can get with me or any of the other members and that way we know that um, our questions will be taken care of. I'd be more than glad to do so. Thank you. Uh, I do understand that through through the past uh, that uh, there was times that your representatives failed to do some of the things that the past council wished for them to do. Uh, I will do my best to honor that. I'm here to serve the people of Pleasanton uh, as well as, as you. And uh, I'm here for your request. But uh, I'd like to hold one of the <coughs> that, that say I disagree with uh, one of the items that you might uh, want us to change. Uh, if I will allow, be allowed to give you my comments about why I wish to vote a certain way. And then if you still disagree, then I can assure you I will vote 
the way of this council because uh, you appointed me and I'm here to serve you and the citizens. So. Sounds fair to me. Sounds Thank very you. fair. Yeah. I appreciate well, I it. appreciate those being in the packet because also whoever gets a packet gets the same information that we do. So okay, I will uh, it's helpful. Uh, I, will, uh, I did create a slight commotion. I, I did have questions about uh, why the board is only meeting every other month. I, I feel that uh, we need to meet uh, uh, every monthly uh, in order to do an excellent job for the citizens. I think we need to, to do it monthly where I can keep this council informed on a monthly basis, not come up here every two or three months and give you a report. I, I don't think that's justifiable uh, to the citizens. I don't know if I'm going to be successful. <laughs> Any other questions or comments from Mr. Pippen? Thank you, Mr. Pippen. Thank, Thank you, very, you much. very much. Item number 11 is a presentation and discussion by ComZone. Uh, it's uh, by Mr. Bob Cohen, the uh, CEO. Mayor, I'd just like to say a few comments about ComZoom and Mr. Cohen. Uh, his biography is in you all's packet. I won't be redundant with every bit of it, but basically Bob's going to tell you all tonight that Pleasanton is, 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 he, is his top priority and his company's top priority. He is bringing a utility to the city of Pleasanton that we have not had before. It'll put us on par with many other communities in South Texas. To give you a little bit of background on Bob. He's a 35 year plus media industry veteran. He has an extensive background in media, sports and entertainment. He spent 23 years with Clear Channel Communications. When he left there, he was the chief executive officer of, Internet, of the International Radio uh, Division, which managed 240 stations with a $300 million revenue item every year. Bob's a native San Antonian, native South Texan, some of those radio stations that were involved locally were, as we all know, 1200 WOAI, Ticket 760, and Country Litter KJ97. It's one thing to be a professional, but it's another <coughs> thing to be recognized by the members of the community. He's been the past chairman of Valero Alamo Bowl, still serves on the Athletics Advisory Council with UTSA, and he's a lifetime board member of the Valero Texas Open. Uh, I could go on and on here. Um, needless to say, Bob's a real professional. He understands it. And uh, I, this is a very exciting time for our community. He and his investors and his partners have bought and have systems that they now own in Lavernia, Casterville, Hondo, Lytle, Natalia, Divine, Corn City, Kennedy, Pleasanton, Three Rivers, Goliad, Comfort, and Bandera. And Pleasanton will be the first. And without anything... <coughs> Bob, we're glad you're here tonight. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Good evening. Thank you, Mr. Pearson, for the introduction. I really appreciate you all having me on your agenda tonight. Uh, as, as Mr. Pearson said, we, our, our company has made an investment in some uh, cable and broadband assets in South Texas, and so uh, I gladly accepted the invitation by Mr. Pearson to come and visit with you all tonight and tell you a little bit about what our plans are to try and answer the question of who are these people and what are, the, what are they going to do here in Pleasanton. So uh, I will try and get through a, a very brief PowerPoint presentation and comment on the, on the uh, notes that are on there and certainly available for questions. Uh, try and get this, get this going right. Our company is called ComZoom. It's a unique name, obviously. Hopefully the, the name conveys speed. That's what we were after there. And let, me, let me also say how difficult it is to come up with a really uh, a literal name. So we really wanted to go with a, a unique name, and we, uh, we went, fought long and hard to, to come up with a good one. But we are a newly formed telecommunications provider, and our three lines of business are ultra-high-speed internet broadband service, fully digital, high-definition cable TV, and voice over internet protocol phone service, which is internet phone, basically. As Mr. Pearson said, we are in 13 markets in South Texas. We are operating uh, a legacy plant at the moment, and we have 2,000, 2000 subscribers across the, our systems. Our corporate offices are in San Antonio, and uh, we are all, all of our management team is from San Antonio. Every single one of our investors and board members, with the exception of two, are from San Antonio. The one that the, we have one that lives in Austin, and one board member, one of our leading board members, lived in San Antonio for 30 years until he got married and moved to Dallas. But he also happens to be the lead director of Rackspace since its inception. So we, we, we thought that would be a, 
good thing to keep him on, you know, have him on our board. But we're, uh, that is a little profile about uh, people in our company. And let me tell you how we, we formed. Our company formed basically with three acquisitions. Reach Broadband, which some of you may have heard of, operated here in Pleasanton for, I think, about a half a dozen years. We acquired 10 of their South Texas markets. They also operate in other parts of the state, but uh, they had a footprint here in South Texas, and we acquired those assets. Those are, those are all 100% aerial assets on phone, you know, cable, but coaxial cable between phone poles in these communities. And at the moment, offering a limited amount of broadband and, and also a limited amount of cable television, 40 channels of analog cable. The second acquisition we made uh, was a bankrupt company out of East Texas, which had three markets, or at least one market we were interested in in, uh, in our area, Bandera. And along with that came Lake Hills, which is on the north shore of Medina Lake, or what was Medina Lake, and mm -hmm. now Medina Canyon. Uh, and then also little old Charlotte down there, south south of Jordanton. Those two markets we're going to park for a while. But Bandera is obviously a, a, that was a that was another market we wanted to get. And we added those markets to two markets that my partners had acquired before I even got involved with them. They we we bought a uh, mom and pop operation out of Comfort and out of Lavernia uh, from a family there, and had been uh, idling along with those particularly in Lavernia, but, but uh, in, in Comfort, we added some subscribers. And, and with the three of those acquisitions, that's, what, that's how we get to 15 markets. But it's thir we're only counting 13, as I said. I hope you can see this. Um, as Mr. Pearson said, this, uh, we're in South Texas, and as you can see on the map here, it's really more or less an 11 o'clock to 4 o'clock profile on, on the map. The, the, if you go around, you can see our market of comfort, Bandera, all the way around. Our furthest most markets are, are Three Rivers and Goliad. But, uh, and you can see by the color coding on the uh, legend on the right, we have video operations. This is presently, this is legacy service. Video operations in those six, seven markets. Video and some internet in the four in yellow, including Pleasanton. And then video, internet, and <coughs> in Castroville and Hondo. And then, of course, our future as I told you a moment ago, in uh, Lake Hills and Charlotte. It's sort of there on the bottom. And, of course, you'll notice the asterisk there on Pleasanton. Pleasanton Market is his first cab off the rank, as they say, to be upgraded. And I'll tell you a little bit about our plans. What does upgraded mean? And what it means is that we are doing a full system-wide technology upgrade to an IP internet delivery technology for a high-speed hybrid fiber coaxial infrastructure. When, we're, when we get that infrastructure in place and upgraded, we'll be able to deliver up to 500 megabits of, of, of uh, capacity into the neighborhoods and up to a gigabit into business districts. When we do that upgrade, we'll also have the ability to deliver uh, over 200 or approximately about 200, a little more than that, video channels, music channels, premium channels, etc. As I said earlier, our legacy service here, we're only able to deliver about 40 channels of analog. Reach Broadband was, uh, had, had operated that system for a while at, and absentee ownership out of, out of Colorado and East Texas. We, uh, we do plan on uh, boosting that to a couple hundred channels. And maybe the most exciting thing about all those channels is one that w you wouldn't think would, would be uh, is, is not coming from a national network. Well, we do plan on doing an, a, a local origination channel. And what that'll be is a, is a channel which will be for this community. As you all well know, there's, uh, there's not that many local radio stations in these markets anymore. What, what ones there were have now turned into San Antonio, the part of San Antonio clusters, et cetera. What we want to do with this channel is really make it yours, have a place for high school football games to be carried, for uh, school plays, for a council meeting such as this, for speaking engagements, you name it. Uh, even, even when something like the Cowboy Homecoming is going on, why not have the organizers in there for a quick interview with, with somebody, maybe someone from here, maybe somebody from, from our staff, but a, a real local outlet for you all to get the word out. School closures, uh, road closures. It really, it's wide open to our creativity and your creativity. I've had an interesting conversation with several of the superintendents from independent school districts around the area, including Dr. Kleinsmith. And one of the first things that we talked about was the vocational 
and career training opportunity that this could provide. Imagine some of the kids in your school district having a chance, if they, have the, if they, if they want to, to, to go and broadcast a football game and see it on the air, actually on the air and not just on a YouTube channel. So we're excited about those kind of opportunities. And that doesn't obviously have to be just football. It can be basketball, volleyball, school play, anything. So we're really excited about that. It's a, it's a rough draft at the moment. And I'm sure each community is going to do it a little bit differently, but we're really excited about providing that kind of service. We talked about the, the VoIP Internet phone. This is just phone over the Internet, which provides, which is going to provide you with unlimited domestic long distance. So everything in the lower 48, you want to call somebody in Vermont, it dials and it rings on their end just like a, just like a normal phone would. That's the Internet phone. And then, of course, there's a little money in it for you because we're a cable, we're a cable operation. The, the, the uh, state issued Certificate of Franchise Authority grants you 5% of our gross video revenues, which are, uh, I think, paid out on a quarterly basis. I think that's right. But um, that's, that's the other little, uh, that's the other little uh, item that is important to recognize. So I want to talk a little bit about the pipe business. And you guys have heard a lot of things about the pipe business uh, in the last few years. But really, we're talking tonight about a different kind of pipe. And, and, and I want to talk a little bit about internet connectivity and give you a glimpse, a really quick glimpse of what the future holds and what the situation is worldwide right now, but particularly in our country. Uh, we, you've all heard of Cisco. It's a network management company, big uh, international global company. They project that 50, there will be 50 billion connected devices worldwide in the next five years. And if you think about it, and this is not a stretch, that's an average... There's an average at the moment of between five and nine connected devices in everybody's home. You think about your own situation. When you really total it up, there's a lot of con internet connected devices in, in your homes. And all of those devices run on bandwidth. And there's a lot of demand on that bandwidth, particularly in certain times of the day, whether you're residential, whether you're at your home or in a business. But there it takes, a, it takes a bandwidth, it takes a pipe to run it. And we want to be that pipe for this community and others. And what is, what is it that's driving the consumption of this bandwidth? Well, this is all happening very quickly. Uh, and, so, and a lot of it is out of our control. Just look at these logos up here. You, you recognize them. Netflix, Hulu, Amazon TV, Skype, YouTube. These are, these are programming sources. These are, these are services that we don't control, you don't control, but are out there. And people are downloading them. And it puts an enormous demand on, on internet bandwidth. It takes a lot to run them. Think about Google for a moment. I know you all, these are, the, the previous services are called over-the-top services, but you've heard uh, about Google, and you've heard that Google is putting fiber into certain markets across the U.S. They're in Kansas City, they're in Provo, Utah, they're going into Austin. They are not doing that just for fun. They're doing that because they know that the next generation of devices and services is coming right behind them, and they want to be the infrastructure that powers all of that. That's why they're wiring up markets like that with fiber. So this is not a trend that's going to go backward. This is all on a northward trajectory. And there will be more and more devices and services that require bandwidth. And internet now, as you know, is really no longer a ceiling. It's a floor. It's a price of entry. It's, it's, it's the ante up. It's what you have to have. To me, this is what's important for communities like Pleasanton and others, is it is an important part of your economic development. I know that Mr. Pearson and other economic development folks and city, city officials from all of these communities, if a business is thinking about coming to Pleasanton, it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be too far down the list that a question that you're going to get is, what's your internet situation? You got to have it. And if you can't answer that question, there's another city next door that, that can. And this is, this is the thing I'm most excited about. We're a broadband-centric company, and we're going to be able to, to provide a pipe in this community that's going to be able to equip you and level that playing field a little bit with the other communities in the area and provide you that important component of, of economic development. Certainly a quality of life issue. We all know how important Internet connectivity is to us every day now. It's just a part of our fabric. You've got to have it. The multitude of connected devices I told you about, that's, that's uh, not going backwards. The future of work. Think about the future of work. You can work now from wherever you like, provided you've got that bandwidth infrastructure, you've got that internet infrastructure. I look at 
markets like Pleasanton and some of the others that we're involved with is this is going to be something that's going to help you retain professionals that don't want to live in San Antonio but might need to work there, but they can, they can work from here. It's part of our future. We talked to, I talked about the uh, meeting I had with Dr. Kleinsmith. I think it's important to understand that most of these school districts have made arrangements to get the bandwidth they need in these communities into their, in their schools. But what happens when the kids go home? My son doesn't do any homework right at, at the moment without a computer in front of him or an iPad in front of him. So we need to be able to, to provide that capability at people's homes as well. This is going to transform our ability to educate our kids now and in the future. Telehealth, telemedicine, clinical support from big markets like San Antonio, Houston, Dallas, etc. If you've got the bandwidth, people can get medical services that they'd otherwise have to travel 45 minutes or, or longer in traffic to the medical center in San Antonio now to get. The, the, amount, the number of changes that we're going to experience in the next five years to television is going to, is going to blow away what we've seen in the last two decades, two, three decades. And this is, this is happening with cord shaving, cord cutting or trimming, whatever you want to call it, we're going to see a heck of a lot of changes to the way people consume television and entertainment. And I want to mention one other thing. This sounds a little far-fetched, but if you've ever heard of something called the autonomous car, the future generation of cars, and it's not that far ahead of us, is you're going to pull into your driveway or your garage, and your car is going to receive an, needs to be able to receive an update to its computer system in order to run properly. And if you think that's far-fetched, think about, you've all heard about a Tesla. That's what a Tesla is. I've, I've been in a Tesla. It's a computer, and they don't, you don't take it to get tuned up. You download software, and that's where things are going. So let's talk about Pleasanton and the Pleasanton timeline. We have a lot of work to do, and as Mr. Pearson said, it's our, it's our first market, and we are excited about what we want to do here, and we've got a lot of work to get there, but we're, we're moving along with it. Uh, here are the steps that we have to take. We're going to do this in phases. It's going to be easier for us to be, get up with the data and internet service first before we get to video. So Pleasanton happens to be one of the markets that had a little bit of infrastructure when we acquired it. So we are going to take advantage of the fact that there's been a little investment here already and, and plug in uh, the things we need to take it to the upgrade level, which includes putting in what's called a CMTS. Uh, here in this market, we, we expect that that'll happen uh, late first quarter, late March of, of this year. And what that'll do is take the existing subscribers that we have in Pleasanton at the moment, and they'll see an immediate change in what they can do with their internet. That'll take a little pressure off of our system. We're redlining it right now. We're pushing it to the limits. Once we get that CMTS in place, performance will improve on, exi on the existing system. And what does that? What does CMTS mean? It, is, it stands for a cable modem termination system. It's a it's a piece of equipment. And it's a it's a it's a uh, important installation, and it opens up the it opens up the capacity of the lines. Okay, thank you. Uh, new fiber circuit has to be put in place between here and and uh, and San Antonio. When that happens, speeds will increase from a maximum of 12 megabits per second, which is what we can deliver right now, to uh, uh, to individuals to up 100 megabits per second. As soon as we get that in place, we'll take all of our all of our internet activity, all of our television activity into one central head-in facility in San Antonio that we're building out now, send it down on long-haul fiber that's already buried in the ground. Those circuits are, are already negotiated. It just takes a while to, to, to get them installed, and that will happen and be completed by hopefully by the end of, of May uh, of this year. Then you may have seen a, a little location that we acquired over there on Encino, next to Coastal Bend College. We have a little building there. We acquired two buildings, one here and one in Hondo. I have the uh, architectural drawings in my briefcase right now that I just got from the, from the architect today. We will, we will gut that. It has good bones, but we're going to gut it out and uh, make it a, a, a nice retail shop for people to come and pick up their equipment and pay their bill and also be technical people there, which, which people can access to ask questions and figure out how to, how to work all this stuff. And then we want that facility staffed by somebody from here. So it'll be a, hopefully a friendly face that you recognize manning our retail shop there on Encino. The video service is the next phase. That takes a little longer. First thing we got to do is build up our, our infrastructure in San Antonio. We've got 10,000 square feet in our corporate office. Part of that's going to be for the central head-in facility. Instead of having all those dishes that you see out on Encino now, we'll have one big dish or two big dishes in San Antonio pulling all that information down, sending it, sending it out on IP on the long-haul fiber 
out to all of our communities, including Pleasanton. It takes a while to build that out. We're working on it now. Uh, FedEx guy knows us all by first name, and, and uh, they're bringing <coughs> equipment every day. So, our, so, uh, so uh, we will be ready for our the video service, which I talked about <coughs> by the middle of this year. But up until then, we still have our existing service, which is 40 channels of analog cable, which is, isn't great, but it's all we got, and we'll, we'll continue to service that. And, and the, the other component is that we have the ability to also expand our footprint. And, and that is a part of our plan here as well. We, we want to try and broaden our, our coverage as much as we can. And I want, to, I want to give you an idea of what that looks like. You will see... Um, you will see our trucks and our installers around town doing the following thing to, to uh, not only our plant, but any future plant we have. Now, we have nothing to do with discount low voltage at 888 797 They just had a nice YouTube video, which was pretty descriptive, and so I decided to borrow it. So hopefully this is going to work. I'll give you an idea. Go ahead, Andres, if you want to get that. That's called a lashing machine. As you can see, it looks like a giant oatmeal box, <coughs> aluminum oatmeal box, and they just pull it down those cable lines between the poles, and while it's going down, it's wrapping a piece of fishing line, heavy-duty fishing line, which is fiber. The signal goes to those, those fiber strands as light signals, and we wrap it around the infrastructure of the coaxial cable. That's why we call it a hybrid fiber coax infrastructure. We have the aerial placement. We need the, the fiber needs support. It wraps around our existing cable plant. And then that will occur in, in, we already have fiber in a lot of this market, but that will occur in places where we need to fortify. And that's the other thing that we'll be doing in, in areas where we don't presently have coverage. And, and there will be a lot of that, hopefully, in, in the coming months. So that's just, uh, that's just a little update of what, what our plans are, what our vision is. We have a website. It's not very good yet. It's just, a, it's just a landing page. I'm busy working on getting those pages out and, and updated. The one thing that is on there is a place for people to go and sign their names and get on a mailing list so we can communicate more easily and do email blasts. We're on Facebook. We're on Twitter. Uh, we're getting a lot of buzz, e even though we've done no marketing at all. Uh, it's happening with word of mouth, and, and we will begin aggressively marketing once we have service to promote. We don't want to really do too much promotion of what we have at the moment, but we will, we will do <coughs> in gear. So uh, plan on seeing me around town a lot. We, we, we're going to be very visible and put, putting a lot of shoe leather on the ground and visiting folks, being involved in city events, being involved in, in speaking to Lions Clubs and Rotary Clubs and Kiwanis Clubs and and uh, you name it. We just we want to be active in the community. We want to be some uh, service that you're proud of. We want to be an asset to the community. We want to help you level the playing field and be something you're proud of that you can talk about with confidence. And we, we you know we certainly want input from you. We want to listen to what your needs are, both as a, from a commercial play as well as residential, and try and deliver everything everything and more that you want. It's a fast moving industry. It's an unbelievable technology. What an exciting time we're living in right now, and uh, we're just excited to be able to, to look ahead and see what this is all going to look like a, a few months, years from now. Is there, a, is there an opportunity maybe to do like a free city Wi-Fi? Uh, you know, like I know San Antonio has SA free Wi-Fi. Um, is there an opportunity for us to do something like that? Sure, we can talk about that. There's places that we, we've, we've had those internal conversations that that's a service we'd like to be able to, to work with the cities and, and plan out, like in city parks and what have you. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that there's a, uh, when it comes to city events, we, we want to be able to, to light those areas and, and uh, as, part, as, as a way to sponsor certain events and be involved. And absolutely, there's, there's certain ways to talk about that. And do we have an idea of, or do you have an idea of what, uh, could you give us an idea of what the pricing is going to be? For just <laughs> For the idea you just mentioned, or, or no, 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 for for you know, like a residence or a business. oh, sure, sure. Well, um, we are in the process of tightening that down now. I will say this: that the, um, for example, and I'll give you a couple of uh, rough data points for you. Uh, as a, in a residential in a residential model, right now, I believe that our our system here would cost about. Uh, 
to deliver 12 megabits of download speed all in probably around $70 plus taxes and fees. <clears throat> that same amount of money will deliver as much as 25 megabits of download speed. In other words, at least double uh, up to more than, you know, even closer to um, even closer to 50 megabits per second download speed. So we're tightening all that down. So basically, basically what we're talking about as we work through this, that's residential pricing. Commercial will be a little bit different. But the prices will be similar to what REACH has been charging, but, but the delivery for that price is going to be a, 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 quite a bit more, as well as the, up, the, the headroom options that you have. We'll be able to go far beyond that and deliver, deliver download speeds and performance that goes way beyond that and obviously cost more, but... But these are options that don't exist in this market at the moment. Right. And at so. 70s for the equipment, what would an idea of a monthly charge be for? For like a modem? Uh, well, no. You said the equipment was around seventy dollars to deliver. No, no. That's that's the that's the service. That's the service. Oh, okay. that's a service well, amount. And you'd be paying for you pay for a modem and a, and a and a cable set top box. It depends on how many boxes you have and and that sort of thing. Those are that part of the part of the monthly bill. Okay. All right. So those are those are rough. We're still working on tightening all those down, but you know we want to make it something that's affordable. We want to make it something that's uh, that's you know uh, market based and and cover our costs and uh, plugged into a, a model we have. But I think you'll I think you'll be pleased that the if you are a, a Reach subscriber or former Reach subscriber at the moment. If the amount of money, the, the approximate amount of your money you're paying is going to deliver you a heck of a bit, heck of a lot more than you're getting now, and then there'll be additional options beyond that uh, that you can that you can do to, to get your house lit up. Mr. Mayor, Mr. Best, uh, for those that know me, they y'all know I'm like a kid in a candy store at the moment. Uh, to get some comparison on this, uh, probably one of the major providers right now charges maybe around $55 a month for six megabytes per second. So, you know, if he's running around 70 and you say it's going to be near 25, or more or less. More or less. In that yeah, area. that that is Zooming. Uh, Comzoom's a great name. Uh, I, my opinion, I mean, I, I actually work from home. I teach online. I, I, we, we do a lot of things. I, I teach at over 2,000 universities worldwide. So it's, it's my thing. And uh, to me, this right behind the oil will be one of the most important changes, movements that this city has had right, right past the oil boom. Because this opens the door for every big business or any business that wants to come here, anything that was holding them back before. Th this is huge. This is really beautiful. I'm very happy. Thank you. Any other questions, Mr. Cohen? Mayor, I have one question. One thing we get all the time, Bob, how many channels? Yeah. Right. Um, well, I've, I've just, we've been working like crazy on that. It's a heck, heck of a lot more complex than, than you'd think it is. And, and frankly, video is under a lot of pressure. I'll, get, I'll answer your question directly, Bruce. But uh, video is under a lot of pressure from the programmers. When you read in the newspaper that the NBA has gotten a billion dollars for its rights fees, don't, you have to understand that that goes all the way down to you and I when we're paying for our cable bill. So there's a lot of pressure from the programmers on those margins. Um, still a good business, but that's why you're seeing services like Netflix and Hulu and so forth. Those, those folks are on the rise because people are cord shaving, cord cutting, and it's, it's difficult. But we are in the process of trying to figure out what the right satellite combinations are in terms of transponders, which channels we want to bring down. We believe that our, our basic lineup, our expanded basic lineup, which is the step between Lifeline, which is just the San Antonio broadcast channels, Weather Channel, WGN, um, a, a religious channel, KLRN, et cetera, the, the, the basic package will have 100 channels in it. And then you can add on your premiums, your, your Showtimes, your HBOs, et cetera, et cetera. And then there'll be another tier, a digital tier. And there'll be a Hispanic tier. There'll be a sports tier to where you take it up to. Uh, and also, that's, a, that's video channels. And there'll be another 40 or 50 music channels. And then on up beyond that, to, we think we're going to be operating at least in the near term with a couple hundred channels, including video and premiums and music channels. I, I would just like to piggyback on what Mr. Best said. Uh, we have been fortunate in Pleasanton to not be able to refuse or lose anybody in, in an economic development environment who has sat down with us. But there have been those who have voiced their concerns. Most recently, 
uh, a restaurant that is a statewide chain and open. Actually told the chief and I when we went to visit them and congratulate them on their opening, we almost didn't think we could make it in Pleasanton because we could not get what we needed to get to our headquarters to operate our software. But we were able to get it. It's slow, but we are pleased. To get it. And I agree. Uh, 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 not only just, you know, the restaurants, the hotel, but major industry, major commercial development will now have that avenue uh, to come to Pleasanton and not only be not only survive, but be connected to the outside world. And uh, I thank you for coming, Bob. Any other questions? Yes, sir. Mr. Oh, is this just going to be in our city limits or is it going to be spread out or? How do you all plan on doing that? Well, we're going to go out as far as we can. You know, we get down to almost to Jordanson. That's another, that's another area. Uh, it's not, it, 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 there, are, there are systems over there which are, uh, which are. Will you all cover like the new companies that are in now? Yes, sir. I mean, I, I couldn't sit here and tell you exactly the, what the map looks like, but we're going to cover the, we're going to cover the city proper and then go beyond that. And it, as I said earlier, uh, we've spoken in the last, this week, we've spoken to some folks who are uh, working in, in, in developing property here and developing residences and so forth that are a little bit outside of our plant. For example, we go down 97 to about where that Super 8 hotel is. But in the last <coughs> couple of weeks, I've talked to a few businesses that are beyond that. We intend to, to, yeah. to string it all the way we down. We have a lot of people that are right. beyond. Right. And I, again, I don't have... I don't have a good enough handle on exactly where the plant ends, but I know that Pleasanton is the kind of market that we think we'll start, we'll build center out, and we'll go out to where the, where the demand is as best we can and as quick as we can. And like I said, the, uh, you know, the pricing information certainly expected that question. We are, you know, give us the, give us the elbow room to, to tweak here and there, but, you know, we're sort of in that range that I, I told you about. We've got to do a little bit more work, particularly on the video side, because there are some complex calculations we have to do with each and every network and folks like ESPN discovery etc cetera, etc cetera, you know they they take their pound of flesh that's why they can pay the NBA a million dollars and pay the NFL all their money in the major league baseball so we got to sort all that out make sure it's that we price intelligently deliver a great service and uh, you know we're capitalists too so we have to we have to do that but I think you'll be really pleased with the amount of bandwidth and the amount of data, internet speed we'll be able to bring in here and and at an affordable cost and, and also the, the limits to which we can go that you can't do now and of course and there'll be a there'll be a, two kinds of pricing structures there'll be a residential and a commercial mayor Ms. Cicero. thank you I just slide in there for a second yeah. um, I'm very interested in um, hearing that there is a smaller possible market package for residential um, like you were saying about the hundred channels uh, that's something that certainly interests me because I don't want 405 600 channels and I am one of those who has cut the cord <coughs> um, with uh, blu-ray and uh, using Amazon and Netflix and Hulu in order to um, finally try to slow down the monster that AT&T is um, because they just continue to expand whether you want it or not and then you're stuck in a place of getting shoved with it. The one package they don't ever offer is a smaller package for, those, for residential that uh, wants a definite bandwidth, wants internet, wants that, but they don't want, uh, they're no longer, you know, totally keyed up into being a rack space or, or anyone else like that. So having a package that's just more of a residential package rather than somebody who's extreme is really something that's important and it sounds like you're focusing on that. And I'm really happy with that. Local channels plus a few is something that everybody would be buying up around here. Well, that's good to hear. And, and yeah. like I said, that, that when, Mr. Mayor, when you asked about the pricing question, I want to be clear that the price range that I was giving you was for data, internet. The, uh, the video packages are still, we're still working through all that. And we'll, we'll, we'll promote that as soon as we as soon as we're ready, which won't be long. So, any other questions? Other questions for Mr. Cohn? Thank you very much. Thank you. I don't know about you, but I just want to dance. <laughs> <laughs> I, I will say this. 
You, in Pleasanton, Texas, you will have more internet speed than I can get in San Antonio by a lot That's in, right. in my home. Thank you, Bob. Item number 11, discussion action to declare surplus fire department equipment. Chief Garris. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, I'm before you tonight to see if we can declare some old hose that we have as outdated and surplus equipment. In years past, we just donated that stuff, that equipment. But now the procedure, we have to do it this way, this part of that procedure. Uh, the Texas Constitution, I believe it's I, Section I-52, gives municipalities uh, the law to do this. So that's why I'm before you tonight. Okay. Uh, Texas Commission on Fire Protection, the TCFP, sets the useful fire hose date as 1987. The Pleasant Fire Department presently has 2,000 feet of 2.5 and, and 3 inch fire hose, along with 800 feet of inch and 3 quarter fire hose, and has passed its useful date. We would like the council to declare this hose as surplus or outdated equipment, and once this is done, we'll be able to donate this fire hose to the Texas uh, Forest Service Helping Hands Program uh, for distribution to the Lemming and Rossville Fire Departments. And uh, you have two uh, options, either declare it as uh, surplus and outdated equipment or not to declare it. And our recommendation is we do declare it as outdated equipment because the department can't use it anymore because we're under a TCFP now, and they say we can't use hose older than 1987. So, Mayor, Mrs. Yeah. I'd like to make a motion. Please, I'd like to make a motion that uh, under the Texas Constitution, Article Three, Section Five Two One or Five Two I, <coughs> we declare the 2,000 foot of two and one half inch and three inch fire hose along with the one and three quarter inch fire hose as surplus and outdated equipment. Second. Second to the number of Texas Article 3, Section 52, I declare the 2,000 foot of two and a half inch and three inch fire hose along with the one and three quarter uh, fire hose as surplus and outdated equipment. Any discussion? None proceed to the vote. Those in favor of the motion, please raise your right hand. Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Yes, sir. I don't remember. Agenda item. Oh, go ahead. I don't remember. Thirteen is discussion action to direct the city staff to donate surplus fire department equipment, fire hose to Texas Forest Service for designation to the Lemming and Rossville Volunteer Fire Departments. Mr. Mayor. Okay. At, at the present time, the Pleasant Fire Department. Oh, has uh, Mr. I was, Persephone. I was just going to make the motion. Oh well, go ahead. Okay, I'd like to make a motion to direct Please. the city staff to donate the two thousand of two thousand feet of two and a half inch and three inch hose along with eight, 800 feet of one and three quarters inch surplus and outdated fire hose to, uh, <laughs> to the Texas Forestry Service Helping Hands Program, which will distribute the hose out to the Lemming and Rossville Volunteer Fire Department. Second. The move and segment directs city staff to donate 2,000 feet of two and a half inch and three inch hose along with 800 feet of Inch three quarter surplus and outdated fire hose to the Texas Forest Service Helping Hands Program, which will be distributed, which will distribute the hose out to the Lemming and Rossville Volunteer Fire Departments. Any discussion? Number Votos in favor of the motion, please raise your right hand. Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Thank you, Chief. Thank you very much. I just want to let you all know we replaced some of that hose already, so we're not going to be short handed. <laughs> okay. <laughs> discussion action to continue the, or item number 14, discussion action to continue. Uh, to use the financial services of Mark McClaney, now with Samco Capital Markets, Inc. Mayor, this is a business item. Mr. M Mr. McClaney and his complete staff has left <coughs> South Coast Securities to move over to Samco. Uh, Mr. McClaney and his staff have served this city long, and they've been very dedicated to this city and their financial advising of the city. Uh, the city staff has a great working relationship with Mr. McClaney, as do the council, and high praises for his service, professionalism, and most of all of his accessibility. You have your options in front of you tonight. Staff recommendation is to direct city staff to enter into an agreement with Mr. Mark McClaney and Samco to be the city of Pleasanton's financial advising firm and direct Southwest Securities to transfer all of the city of Pleasanton's document files to Samco. Mayor. Sister. I'd like to make a motion to Please. direct the city staff to enter into an agreement with Mr. Mark McClaney and Samco to be the city of Pleasanton's financial advising firm and direct Southwest Securities transfer all of the city of Pleasanton's documents, 
and files to SAMCO. So I kind of moved and seconded direct city staff to enter an agreement with Mr. Mark McClaney and SAMCO to be the city's financial advising firm and direct Southwest Securities transfer all of the city of Pleasanton documents and files to SAMCO. Any discussion? None proceeded to the vote. Those in favor of the motion, please raise your right hand. Post same sign. Motion carries. <coughs> Item number 15 is discussion and action to purchase Chronos Electronic Payroll and Timekeeping System. Our finance director, Ms. Martinez. We had a pretty pretty healthy description from you of what it was, so <laughs> unless anybody didn't read it. <laughs> right. Uh, I think you can go kind of, you know, just briefly over it and then okay. your, what your recommendation is. Okay. Uh, well, basically, you read it, and I would like for Maria to elaborate on the process that she goes through every two weeks to process payroll. Basically. Sure, that would be helpful. Um, currently, right now, every department um, has to submit timesheets, and I have to manually calculate it out to make sure that they. Um, did all their calculations right. I have to make sure they uh, physically worked 40 hours before they can get overtime. And then I have to manually input all that data into the system. It takes me um, like a full eight hours of before payroll's done. But that's not even the department getting together um, their timesheets. It's a lot of work. Even the leave forms, like every year, just gets bigger, just paper that they have to submit that they want this day off, and then I have to say, yes, you have the time, then it goes to their department head. So it's it's a lot of um, man hours right now. And what I'm understanding is, uh, just so everybody knows, uh, in case you haven't looked at the packet, what they're, what they're suggesting is it's like $33,000, $34,000. Right. But the annual savings would be close to... Two hundred forty something thousand dollars, correct? Right. At two percent of the workforce, if we calculate it at two percent, it's two hundred seventeen thousand one hundred and seventeen dollars. At two and a half percent, it's two hundred fifty thousand eight oh nine. So we'll make our money back. Mayor and Ms. Israel. Yes, I'd like to make a recommendation to direct the staff to purchase the Kronos workforce ready hardware and software to realize the savings in processing payroll in the amount of one hundred and eighty. $3,661.26, calculated at 2% of the workforce and $217,353.60, if calculated at 2.5% for the quoted price of $33,455.60. Before we, before we, uh, well, <laughs> sorry, you caught me. Uh, could I get you to remove, uh, I'd like to make a recommendation. Yes. And would you, would you still maintain your second with that being removed? Yes. All right, it's been moved to second to direct city staff to purchase the Kronos Workforce Ready Hardware and Software to realize the savings of processing payroll in the amount of $183,661.26 if calculated at 2% of the workforce and $217,353.60 calculated at 2.5%, quoted up to $33,455.60. Any discussion? No, no, proceed to the vote. Yes. in favor of the motion. Uh, Mr. Gallegos. I'm sorry. I was trying to get to that page. Okay. I have a couple of questions. Where will these time machines be? Okay. And my second question is, are they going to be able to clock in off of their cell phones? Yes. Yes. So if I'm running late, I still have 15 minutes to get to work. I can clock when I'm pulling out of my driveway. Well, I think that's something that, that gonna work? we as management have to discuss. We haven't really discussed all those particulars. As far as the time clocks, there's going to be one. There's going to be six of them. There's going to be one here at City Hall, Museum, Civic Center. Uh, fire Department will clock in at the Civic Center. PD. Um, museum. Museum. And it will be a biometric model, meaning they'll put their thumb there. It will also be, though, there you have access to an app on the phone and again we're going to have to learn all the mechanics of that too and how we handle each each situation i think it's a great idea but to clock in on your your cell phone that that will be a feature we'll look into later okay. mr guy goes right now we want to get the basic system up and running mm -hmm. which which has to do with 
uh, cutting the 55 hours every two weeks for staff to process timesheets and leave forms, and the biometric thumbprint will not be allowed, will not allow anybody to clock in for anybody except that person. There's all kinds of other variables, but they will program the system based on the custom program we need based on the personnel and how they work. There's all kinds of differences between what's considered overtime for police and fire as other personnel. So all that will be custom programmed. Uh, a lot of this other thing, especially what you just mentioned, will be considered at a later time. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. And the other thing that's not included in here, there, if y'all are interested, uh, Ian, from the representative from Kronos, ha we have a PowerPoint presentation if y'all want to see it. Uh, mm -hmm. it's, it's very short. It's about two and a half to three minutes at the most. Are y'all interested in seeing it? Um, yeah. Mike, could you email it to us? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, good. I mean, I'm just saying so we don't take time up in a meeting. We could, sure. you know, check it out between now and the next sure. meeting. Basically, he just summarizes what I said already. So. Sure. <laughs> in the two minutes. Okay. Yeah. Any other discussion? Not proceeding to the votes in favor of the motion. Please raise your right hand. Opposed the same sign. Motion carries. Thank you. Item number 16 is discussion action direct city staff concerning the street CIP portion of the Pleasant Master Plan 2025. Our engineer, Klein and Cope Engineering. I broke it down for us pretty good, so if you want to summarize and give us your recommendation. Sure. <laughs> yeah, so give me the purpose of this item is to get further direction from council regarding completion of the design phase of the street project. The streets that have been chosen for rehabbing are Cynthia, Maine, Pine Meadow, and Winship. Um, as Mr. Pearson said earlier that the streets were chosen in accordance with staff input regarding those that have the most um, concerning issues. The reasoning on, on each street was noted there. Um, Cynthia was due to the condition of the street and the fact that it had been promised since the 90s and, and it was in one of one of the worst ones in, in consideration. The main street is due to the condition of the street and the council's choice to, to bring focus to, to the downtown area. Um, High Meadow, once again, with the condition of the street and, and school traffic with its importance to ingress and egress to and from the school. And Winship was also with the condition of it, and its importance as a thoroughfare that connected 97 to 3350. Um, at this point, we'll have a presentation from Brian Cope with Klein and Cope Engineering, um, and after after that, we'll get down to the options. Uh, thank you all. As Mr. Meddy mentioned, my name is Brian Cope with the Klein and Cope Engineering. Uh, I've been assisting the city uh, through this street design phase. Uh, we are, I don't know, let me get my slides. I'll go through this as quickly as possible. It's not long, but a lot of this has already been talked about with Mr. Pierce and Mr. Metting. The four streets we're concentrating on are uh, Cynthia, High Meadow, Winship, and Maine. These were basically the some of the top prioritized streets out of some 20 odd streets that are in the, that are in the plan. So these are the streets that we're focusing on now. Again, that's just kind of a general location map of the streets of what we're doing. Uh, uh, Main Street would be all the way basically from the Civic Center to Binsdale and Cynthia Street from Pulliam to Crestline and the, uh, the Windship and High Meadow would be basically from there two connecting streets. Uh, so once, once we determined which streets we're, we were going to do, the city went out and hired a geotechnical firm to come out and do the samples. They sampled probably approximately 15 streets. They took cores on all of them. What we wanted to learn is what 
what material is there? Are we going to try to re reuse existing material? Or are we just going to excavate out what's there and come back with new material? So based on their, based on their findings, um, they did give us re recommendations for each street. Each street not only is, uh, was recommended based on its actual use. Um, you know, the, the Cynthia Drive is, is more of a residential rural street, so that, that, that was given a set of criteria versus a wind shift that sees a lot of truck traffic getting from 97 over, over to, to Goodwin area. So the different loadings kind of come into play. And the, the, uh, the, the recommendations from the engineering company basically were what we expected. Full reconstruction, which would be to come back with new base, new everything. What we found is a lot of the streets just didn't have a lot of the material underneath the asphalt. Um, so another recommendation they gave us was let's just kind of re reclaim what we call reclaim all that, mix it up, add some new base, work it in. So th those were the those were the main ones, and then we have another option of where we could use black base or what we also known as asphalt treated base. That stronger rock, it's coated with asphalt material. Um, there, there's an equation if we need two and a half inches of crushed limestone base, that's equal to one inch of this black base. And uh, it, it is more expensive, but you also, if, if time is a factor of getting roads back open, black base is a great alternative uh, to use to help minimize downtime for, for these construction. These are, uh, for the most part, pretty, pretty, pretty busy streets, the main street and wind shift. So, you know, we, you wanna, we don't want to drag on a project as long as we want to get in, get out, get the product we're looking at. Can I get you to move that paper off the mic? I think that's what's oh, given us. Excuse the, me. Thank you. So basically, Cynthia Drive, we're looking at that in our preliminary design phase, rural section. Um, not, not a heck of a whole lot to it, and there are some options where, where we're looking at as far as the reclaim. And, and when we get into final design, We'll, we're we're going to put this out to bid for reconstruction and reclaim, to see what's best for the city and go with that, <coughs> go with that selection. Um, Cynthia Drive has the, the trees that are out in the middle, so that's what are we going to do with these trees? Are we going to create a median around them? Are we going to get rid of them? Um, what are we going to do? So those things we're exploring. We are working with a land, landscape architect and arborist on what can we do to make sure if we're, if we're going to save these trees, what precautions do we need to take now? Because as we all know, the oak tree root system is within that first two to three feet uh, of the soil there. And, you know, that some of the recommendations on these streets for the repair are going to are 17 inches, 12 inches can be right through that right through that root zone. So what can we do to protect the trees? And so we're, we're, we're still finding out what, what, what we want to do. Another thing with the rural section up there that, that may be something the city will be interested in is, is putting a ribbon curb along, along the streets. And this is something we'd, as more streets in that area get re reconstructed, we would, we would look at doing this if, if you all so choose. Uh, these are some samples of, of a rural section that's kind of similar up there. Just a crown with with the barded swale that carry the drainage. Uh, the, the ribbon curve adds a nice touch to it, but it also helps keep that keeps the structural integrity of the of the street intact. It, you know, if you don't in some areas, if you don't have a curb, that shoulder just kind of tends to roll off um, over time as cars drive on it, whatever. Um, so so this is something we we proposed um, for for the city to look at, and we'll have further discussions on. You know, if this is something we want, we want to move forward with. Okay. The reconstruction of High Meadow Drive <coughs> and uh, Windship Road basically is just reconstruction. High Meadow does have curbs, so we would we would look at replacing the curbs that are there. There's, if you're familiar, you actually have two types of curbing on High Meadow Drive right now. Um, there's a traditional curb and gutter, and then further north on the street, it's more of a, a block. And so what part, part of this project we would look at be replacing the curbs from point A to point B all the way up, get a nice good section in there. Um, Windship Road, that one is a, is a rural section. That one's we basically the, 
to Crown Street with, with the swells on the side to carry, to carry the runoff where it needs to go. Um, that one will be a little, that one will be your, probably our heavier section just for the type of street that it is. Um, Main Street, again, we'd be looking at street reconstruction, uh, replacing curbs, adding sidewalks, um, where there's sidewalks, adding uh, wheelchair ADA ramps um, at the intersections that, that will be needed. Um, another, another thing we're looking at on Main Street is maybe continuing the, the lighting that we have across the street at the Civic Center, run, running north with that antique style of lighting. So that's something else we're, we're pursuing to see what it, see what that may, may be and if that's the direction the city wants to move forward. So we, we, we kind of, this is a project that, that I did a few years ago in, in another city where we, we did exactly that. We took the antique lighting and, and strung, it up, strung it up down there on Main Street and it really, really kind of brought a sense of, uh, you know, I don't know what to say, but it's pedestrian friendly um, down in their business district. Uh, right now your lights, I believe, are coming at the intersections and, you know, they're really just shining for safety on the cars. These, these would be spaced periodically throughout, throughout the whole corridor um, to, to prevent that, you know, friendly walking area to, to help bring that stuff down to the Civic Center. So these are just some slides that we took and I'm not a good photographer, obviously, because it's kind of hard to see the lights, but uh, this is one that kind of, as, as, as the lights came on, that was, was kind of a good shot that kind of portrayed what, what could look up here on your main street. Um, I added this picture to the right just to kind of show what the, uh, how far out into the street each light kind of projects because right now we provision this, this particular city, we did it on one side only. We would ex probably expect to stair step them all the way up main street here in Pleasanton um, just to get that atmosphere and and there was a concern that we, we would have here as well, you know, Main Street has commercial businesses and it looks like there's some residential properties as well. And, and one of the things is, well, I don't want a light shining in my, my living room window all night. So there's, there's things we can do to these antique lights or any lighting. Um, in this particular town, we, we put some shields on the back on the residence side so the light was all reflected out, out to the street. So. Right now, our preliminary design. These are the these are the budget numbers we're using right now. Um, Cynthia Drive was about three hundred thousand. High Meadow Drive about six hundred fifty thousand. Windship six hundred thousand. And Main Street, obviously, uh, with curb and curb and gutter and everything, was a little bit more. It's a longer street than the others. It was about one point two five million. But right now, our total estimate was two point eight million for these four streets. I think. There's around four in the in, in the plan at this point. Yeah, I think it'd be important to mention too, Mr. Cope, if you would, your your preliminary estimate was about two point eight, but you had a well known contractor take a look at it and his estimate was about four point two. So somewhere in there uh, obviously is, is what we'd look at. But you are planning on with direction from council is putting these streets out for bid with all three different types of construction and we, then we would look at what would be best. Yeah, not we, only for the long-lasting, enduring quality of the street, but uh, the economic uh, component for the city as well, correct? Yes, sir. I, I have a question. Mr. Um, on the Cynthia Drive, um, because of the trees, are we going to, are you going to have a, a price with what you want to, what you, ha uh, with saving the trees and a price without the trees to, as a comparison? Um, you know that, in all honesty, from the construction standpoint, there's probably not much price difference. The only price difference would be the removal of the tree, uh -huh. and maybe not putting the concrete curb island around the trees. So, well, if you save the trees, don't you have to widen the street there? Right. Do that. The the uh, the current lane is about 10 feet now. We would continue to maintain that width. I mean, we only well, could go so far within your right of way. Yeah. And so that, that tree island is going to take up 25% of it or 30%. Okay. So we would have a one-way lane on each, each side of each side of the islands. So, you know, it's and, – and, and as we get into our final designs and our recommendations from the arborist of what can we do, you know, because either way we're cutting into the structure and, and the one picture, I don't know if you could tell, but already had a utility trench um, cut through there. So – and it – 
and from what I hear, that utility happened a handful of years ago, and it they, they appear to be holding up. But as far as taking everything out and bringing back, that's what we. That's why we're going to the arborist to say, what what can we do? You know, we hate to get rid of oak trees. Yeah. Um, so you know, we're we're doing our our homework to see what we can do to keep keep that tree, okay. or both both yeah. islands. Yeah, that's fine. Thank you. Besides, uh. Observing and listening to this conversation, train, pretending to live in trees, my past experience, I can name some districts within Pleasanton where <coughs> at the time the trees were left in the center and then concreted around it and everything like that on that nature. It cost the city quite a bit of money because eventually those trees died. And it was stated that concrete is hot, you know, too hot, especially in the summertime. So actually that's why it caused for the trees to die and start falling on vehicles, residents, and close to, you know, to the area. Big trees, I'm not going And Mr. Gaillet was one of the persons that he's a very well person to preserve trees, but he... Lucky he's still alive, and I'm glad he is, because it was something fatal. And I'm not a f believer in leaving trees in the middle of the street. I never have been. I've been against it for years now, and I wouldn't like to see this to continue. I mean, a tree is a tree, sure. A lot of people are tree lovers. I like plants. I like this, but not trees in the middle of the street. It's been a lot of fatalities on the west side part of town. When the developers start building, they left trees in the middle of the street. There were some youngsters. Of course, you know how it is. High school kids or whatever, racing or whatever, and bang, they got killed. So, I mean, I don't think I could support that, to be honest with you. Yeah. Bluntly and very outspoken, I will not support a tree in the middle of the street or close to a resident, real, real big trees, because oak trees are, it's coming to, to an age of, I have noticed through the years of my lifetime here in Plano, they're deteriorating and falling, and that we're endangering with that issue. So Mr. Sines, that's, that's one of the things we're looking at too, it's not only if we go through there and take that street, existing street and base material out, how much of the root structure will we potentially damage but when we come back with a new street and two inches of asphalt, there is not going to be any water getting through that asphalt. Is that tree going to be able to su be, survive mm -hmm. having so much cover over the root structure? And that's one thing we'll, we'll examine with the arborist, much like what we did with the oak tree over here at the entrance to the Civic Center when the arborist's recommendation was to have somewhere between 35 and 40 percent of that tree to have water underneath it. And we don't know that we'll have 30 to 35 percent of that tree with water underneath it with asphalt on both sides. So we're looking at not only what are we going to do taking the existing street up as far as any damage, but when we come back with asphalt, is that tree going to even survive after that, not having air and water to that root structure? Well, with my experience, Mr. Pearson, I mean, I, I don't want to get <coughs> uh, uh, towards your suggestions and everything like that. I do respect for that. but. Uh, I've seen a lot of things happening, and trees don't survive too long afterwards. We can certainly come back to council after the arborist's recommendation and get direction from council on what you want us to That's do. That's fine. Mayor, Mayor. Mr. Mayor. Uh, Mr. Sons. Oh, go ahead. Mr. Uh, before you go cutting any trees down, make sure you let the residents in that street and the city council know, because I think when this was discussed, to pave Cynthia, it was agreed that the street state was in the street. But I may be wrong. I've been sitting here too long, 23 years. But I think that was my understanding. So um, be cautious about cutting old trees. Well, that's, that'll all come to light uh, when yeah. we go through this. Later. So. Any other questions? That's all I have, Mayor. Mr. Mayor? Mr. Mr. Uh, Best. Yeah, I just have uh, one question or comment. Uh, do we know how old the trees are? And if we don't, could you get the arborist to give us an estimate? Just, just out of curiosity. Sure, we can take information yeah. problem. Okay. Most of these trees are between eight and 10 inch caliper trees. 
Okay. Maybe a little bigger. I think they're when I'm I, I met, actually measured them for the arborist uh, a couple of days ago, and, and I believe one was 18 inches diameter, and one was a little bit more than that. Okay, so inches. they're not really old not trees that we're old. talking about. And and, and and one of them's pretty banged up. I mean, I don't know from what, but that's one of the comments that he had. Is like, well, yeah. that, that one tree is pretty pretty scarred already, but. But we, we, you know, that'll all come out in this. Okay. You know, if we decide yeah. to go this direction, it'll all come out in that, right? <laughs> my, my last slide, I'll jump to it. Um, moving forward, you know, we're going to have utility coordination meetings on Main Street, and we're also going to have the 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 neighborhood. You know, we're, we're going to have a meeting to let them know, hey, we're going to be building this street. So, yeah. so your comment about that, I, I think we'll we'll flush all that out. Um, so we will let the public know what's going on. So we're, you know. We're trying to get these streets in great shape for everybody to use, and you know, we definitely want, you know, we don't want to leave the citizens out in that process. <coughs> All right. Uh, that, that basically is my presentation, and, you know, uh, if you have any questions, I'll be glad to answer some more questions, or, you know, John can wrap up here if you all are through with me. Uh, Mr. Garza. Uh, I'd like to move that we uh, uh, direct the city staff Concerning the street uh, CIP uh, portion of the Pacific Master Plan um, 2025, yes. it is my recommendation that the council direct city staff to complete the uh, process of preparing these design plans and advertise for bids for the street <coughs> construction project. Second. We moved and saying to direct the city staff to complete the process for preparing design plans and advertise for the bid for street construction project. Is that correct, Mr. Garza? Yes, sir. Any discussion? If none, we'll proceed to the vote. Those in favor of the motion, please raise your right hand. Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. He voted. Uh, uh, item number 18 is discussion action on proposed amendments to the city charter A, section uh, 9, uh, article 9, section How about 5. 17? 17. I already had it marked off. I guess we can go in order. All right, number 17, discussion action directs the city manager and staff to develop a possible interlocal agreement with Dallas Coast County Commissioner's Court to repair the drainage flooding issue on FM 3350 and the south end of the lane. Mayor? This is wrong. Yes, I'd like to make a motion Please. to direct the city manager and staff to develop a possible interlocal agreement with Dallas Coast County Commissioner's Court to repair the drainage flooding issues at FM 3350 in the south entrance to Liberty Lane. Second. <laughs> Moved and seconded direct city manager and staff to develop a possible interlocal agreement with the Coast County Commissioner's Court to repair the drainage flooding issues at FM 3350 in the south entrance of Liberty Lane. Any discussion? Yes. Mr. Gagos. Any thank you for that agenda that's long overdue. We vote for commissioners. They don't do very much for us in town. So I think this is a good start. Great. Any other discussion? Mayor, I just have one thing to add to that besides thank you for your support. Um, I've had several discussions with um, at least one commissioner uh, uh, as far as the length of time that that has gone unaddressed, and I think that uh, the discussion will be possible. Excellent. Thank you. Other discussion? None will proceed to the voters in favor of the motion. Please raise your right hand. Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Item number 18 is affirmative. Item number 18, discussion action on proposed amendments to the city charter A, Article 9, Section 5, Terms of Office B, Article 9, Section 7, Compensation C, Article 16, Section 1, Director of Finance, Powers, of, Powers and Duties, D, Article 16, Section 8, Contracts for City Improvements. Mayor, I'll just say they're listed A through D so the council can consider each one individually and vote each one individually, yay or nay. Or as a whole, if. Or as a whole. Mayor? I'd like to make a motion. Please. I'd like to make a motion to uh, move uh, forward on the, pro the proposed amendments to the city charter, uh, Article 4, Section 5, Terms of Office. Well, I'm just going to go A, B, C, D. Ms. Miserable, could I ask you to amend your motion on C? Well, hang on, Mr. President. Uh, are you finished with your motion? Uh, yeah, let me make it very clear. Discussion and action. I, I move to uh, move forward on the proposed amendments to the city charter A, B, C, and D. May I request from the staff level and advice of the city attorney that 
C that you amend it to say Article 16, Section D. Section D outlines the city secretary as the ex officio city treasurer, and that would be inserted as director of finance. And I did visit uh, with the chairman of the Charter Review Committee this evening. Mr. Maldonado, any problem with uh, just changing that, knowing that that's part of it? Do we need to go back and read all these as written? I don't have a problem with it changing because, because uh, well, I'm looking at article, it does say article 16, section 1. Uh, and I believe you're, you're referring to a different, uh, I thought you it was oh, it's a section 1, right? Yeah. Okay. No, what Mr. Pearson is fine because it was posted as the entire section. Okay. Right. All right. Mayor, I have a question. We felt like when no, we, we discussed it last we, night, it called out Section L, which was adding a section. We're getting way off our, because uh, we, we have just had a motion <coughs> be made. And no second. 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 All right, it's been moved and seconded to move forward to proposed amendments for the city charter A, B, C, and D. Any discussion? Mr. Yes, Secretary. Mayor. Mr. Goggles. Get to that page. Where are we? Uh, page 109 of the packet. Uh, yeah, I went way over. Okay. That's the first one. Yeah, that's my question right there. That's why I thought it was that's the very first item. Mm -hmm. okay. On Article 4, Section 5, I think the intent is to change it to two three year terms. But if you go down to about the middle of the paragraph, it changes. It, uh, this provision takes effect with the May 2014. I think that's supposed to be, this provision takes effect with the May 2015 election, yeah. not 14. And then the very last sentence, it says a person may not be elected to serve up to four terms as a council member and up to another four terms as mayor. I think that's supposed to say two terms council member and two terms mayor, not four. I, no, I think what it is is because they said that it's two consecutive. So somebody could sit out and run it. The way I'm understanding this, and then if the intent is wrong, it's you can run for two consecutive three year terms, then you'd have to not run, and then you could come back and you still have two more terms you could run for. So. That would allow for four total to either a position as council or mayor, or eight total if you look at it that way. So it, it would give you a chance to run four different times, just no more than two consecutive terms. Is that correct? That was the intent? I, you know, I think Ms. Samson could tell us what the intent was, but that's how I understood it. Ms. Samson, could you, uh, would you mind clarifying that for us? It, the way that I read it, and, and I, I get what Mr. because I had to read it twice, but Mr. Gallegos is, was asking, and I'll try to speak for you because I know your voice is weak. Um, is this saying that you can run for two consecutive three-year terms? So in the way the last sentence is written, a person may be elected to serve up to four terms as council member and up to another four as mayor. So you could run for another two consecutive terms. You just couldn't do them. Uh, the, the two sets couldn't be consecutive. So you could run for two, sit out, and run for two more. Is that the intent? Okay. Is it two or three? It's two, three, three year terms. Three, three, three year terms. terms. Oh. Yeah. Two, two, two you can sit out and come back down. Mayor? Two. Uh, hang on, Mr. Geigel still has the floor. You, you done? All right. Oh, I, I, well, does that May 2014 need to change? He's changed. What, was yeah. that? Yeah, we can, we can yeah, change that. Yeah, 2015. I think that, that second sentence there clarifies it where it says there shall be a limit of two consecutive three-year term served with no person terms. to serve more than four total three-year terms as a council member. And on the bottom it says a person may be elected to serve up to four terms and to me each term is three years so four times three is twelve. Right. But that's the way I'm interpreting. Correct. Yeah. That's correct. And it could be challenged because that is saying I can run four three-year terms because you're not you're talking about terms four terms and each term would be three years correct but not mayor hang on mr let's let's let mr gagos finish so i still don't understand the change there well right now you can serve six years 
sat down and run four more times at six years each? No. You can run for two terms, which would be six years. You would have to sit out, and then you can run for two more terms at six years. Total of 12 years. It's a total of 12 years through three-year terms, and just only two can be consecutive. Okay, I understand the consecutive. Okay. So you can run four different times consecutive. You can hold the office through four different terms. Just not, just not consecutive after two. Hi. <laughs> you have to have a break in there. Okay. Uh, Ms. Israel. I just wanted to clarify, it's exactly the same way as it is now. You can do six years, but it's three two-year terms, and then you sit out one, and then you can run three two-year terms, which is a total of 12 years but you had to sit, break it up in the middle. What they're doing is eliminating the need for council to have to run a, an election in the middle. So you get to serve two three-year terms and only have two elections instead of three, but you're serving six and the maximum amount served is 12. So that's all that's changing. Okay, my second question on this is, or third question, if this does pass in May, how does it affect the present council members and the new council members? The new council members would only have to adhere to this. Um, but, Mr. Maldonado, maybe you can help us in the case of, let's just, can we, do you mind if we use you as an example? Yes, sir. All right, Mr. Gallegos is going to be, finish his last term because he is termed out. What does that mean to him, by the way this is written? Let me go back. No, no, Mayor, I'm just saying, like, how does it affect you and Abraham, and how does it affect the new council members coming the, on? The board? new council, whoever gets, if this passes, whoever gets elected in May will be serving a three year term. Ooh, ooh, I have a question. That's exactly <laughs> how it's written. Uh, hang on, hang on, wait, wait, let's, let's let Mr. Maldonado answer one question. <laughs> so, what we're, what we're trying to find out is in, in the case of, and, and what he's asking in the case, like in his case, he's termed out. What does that mean to him? From the looks of this, it means that if he remains in the same district, he'd be sitting out until that new term expires, which would be three years as opposed to the current two. And then he could run one more time. Two more times. Or two more times. Two more times. Okay. Now what he's asking the case of like me and Mr. Sines who are not turned out and are, um, if we run in May and get elected, We'll have one three-year term left, and then we will be termed out. Correct? So this may give you three-year mayor instead of two years, if it goes yeah. into effect. Yes. That's my point. Yes. That is. That's the way I understand. Oh, yes. I have a question. How does it affect the new comers? They, they just follow by this. They've got three years. They've got two three-year terms. They'd have to sit out one, and they could run for two more three-year terms. So you filed for a two-year term when you filed, but you might get three years if you're elected. Mm -hmm. All I filed for is to run for election. For a two-year um, term is what it says. No, but but that that's that that's not at all has no, nothing no, to do with the connection. No, but I'm just saying, could it be possible that if this passes, you will not only serve two years, you could serve up to three? No, that means that the term would be three years after that. No. But once this happens in May, it is what it is. It's exactly like. No, but will that give you three years? It would I give anybody elected in May three years. Me and anybody else included. I have a and question. then okay, so the newcomers will start at three, issue three, and Abraham will be out next year. I believe that's the way it works. I'm starting to get confused, uh, but the, Mr. Garza. Uh, I have a question for Bobby. Uh, should this not be applicable for the people that vote on it? Should it be waited till the new people come in instead of, because we're voting for it. That, that's not quite fair. It well, should be applied to the problem is it has to it has to come up this May, so we'll always have somebody yeah, coming that's up. Not, that's not right. It's but you'll always fair. have somebody coming due in May, so you'll never you would yeah, never be able to process it. When you vote for it, I don't think uh, you should well, the, be uh, you shouldn't be applying it. But then you would never Isn't be able to apply it. The the problem with what you're suggesting, Mr. Garza, is if if you can't vote for it, if it applies to you, then that would limit your ability to vote. For or for this evening, uh, which defeats the purpose of voting on, on the amendment, proposed amendment itself. Uh, the mayor is right; it's always going to affect some of you, unless the language the language is proposed to affect you in a staggered manner. But even then, it might just create more confusion. Uh, what the mayor suggested is correct. This would replace the current language 
uh, but by definition, it's going to affect how you continue to serve uh, as the new provision is defined. Well, Mayor? I don't agree with it. Two, three years. I think it should be two years. Uh, Ms. Israel. Yes. Let me see if I can clarify this. I had no, I think we've got it clear. I don't, it's not muddy it. To... Yeah, I don't want to muddy the water anymore. I don't, I don't want to muddy it at all. It's been pretty muddy. It was muddy it to begin <laughs> with by changing the charter. So, is there any other discussion? And then, then again, I mean, we do have to understand that these are amendments that we're proposing they'd have to be voted on in the election to make, correct? So, we're just saying, hey, the citizens get to decide this stuff. That's what it boils down to. Let me We're not making the decision to enact you. this. The oh, citizens yeah. will make that decision. Let me ask a quick question. I, I don't know. I, 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 it happens. I mean, too much rebuttal. But you can run for again for another election for re-election. I'm, I'm After out. This. After this term, it's my last term. Just like not if it understand. changes. To Just like oh. mine. Is that right? It you changes to three years. I don't know. Three years. I didn't look at it like that. <laughs> yeah, it is. I, that's the way I understand it. How come you should be? Uh, Mr. Maldonado. Can you stay in my mouth or you can be able to run again or what? Yes, Abraham, because you're on your last term. You have one year. He has a two-year term. But if the three-year term, he should get the three years. He will. He will. Well, that's right. He will. Anybody, Mr. Maldonado and I were just visiting. Anybody presently sitting would get a three-year term, or anybody elected would get a three-year term. So long as it doesn't bump up against the language of the new provision as to terms or years. Okay. I don't agree with that. That's a dirty <laughs> politics. <laughs> to me, it is. It's a mess. That's, that's, the, only way, that's that. the only way it could get me out. Well. <laughs> Um, Any other discussion? Remember, this is all we're, all this does, this vote tonight, whether we say yes or, or no, record. it's saying, do these citizens need to vote on this? Because this yeah. is not yes, our decision. If, if we, Mayor, <laughs> if we vote on each one individually and the majority votes not to put it on the ballot, where do we go from there? We don't put it on the ballot. It doesn't, doesn't come up unless it's, it's, it's done, unless it comes back up. I call for the question. What was the motion? The motion was, and there was no second to the uh, call for the question, so okay. debate is still open. But do remember, there is really supposed to be two times to discuss an item, and then you've exhausted your ability to debate. And I believe we're verging on that with everybody. Um, the motion was to move forward on the proposed amendments of the city charter, A, B, C, and D. Second. No, no, no. Oh. That was the motion. Oh. So you're, we're voting them all together. Yes, the, the way the motion was written is that the motion is to move forward with the proposed amendments of the city charter A, B, C, and D. That is the motion. If there's no other discussion, we'll proceed to a vote on that motion. Yes. All those in favor of the motion, please raise your right hand. Opposed, same sign. No. Oh. Motion carries. Oh. Item number 19 is discussion action to reschedule the March 5th, 2015 city council meeting due to conflict with the president of the Chamber of Commerce Awards Bank. Staff would be to schedule, would recommendation merit be to schedule it on Wednesday, March 4th before the banquet. All right. I make, Ms. Pacifica. I make a motion that we uh, amend or reschedule, reschedule the uh, March 5th, 2015 city council meeting to show due to the conflict with President Pres Pleasanton, I forgot where I lived, Chamber of Commerce Awards Banquet to March the 4th. 2015. Second. It's been moved and seconded to reschedule the March 5th, 2015 City Council meeting due to conflict with the Pleasant Chamber of Commerce Awards Bank, which is March 4th, 2015. Any discussion? None. Proceed to the vote. Those in favor of the motion, please raise your right hand. Post same sign. Motion carries. Item number 20, the regular session of February 5th, 2015, is hereby recessed to hold an executive session pursuant of Chapter 551 of the Texas Government Code, Subchapter D. As it pertains to real property, 551.072. Council, we're still in session at this point. And consultation with an attorney, 551.071. Executive session matters may be voted upon and are acted upon, if appropriate, in open session. The time is 8.55 p.m.
The regular session of the City Council is hereby reconvened February 5th, 2015 at 8, I'm sorry, 9, 21 p.m. Uh, item number 21 is discussion and possible action concerning the possible sale of city-owned right of way between Highway 97 east of 5th Street and Market and Crockett Street and the 4th Street right of way between Crockett and Market Street. I move to approve the possible sale of the city own right of way between Highway 97 East and 5th Street and Market and Crockett Street and 4th Street right of way between Crockett and Market as discussed in executive session. It's been moved and seconded to approve the possible sale of the city owned right of way between Highway 97 East and 5th Street and Market and Crockett Street and 4th Street right of way between Mayor, Crockett uh, and Market Street as discussed in executive Mayor, session. Mayor, I would like to remove the word possible. Yes. Just to move to, move to sale. Uh, would you maintain your second? Yes. All right. So the motion is to uh, approve the sale of the city owned right of way between Highway 97 East and 5th Street and Market and Crockett Street and the 4th Street right of way between Crockett and Market Street as discussed in executive session. Any discussion? None will proceed to the vote. Those in favor of the motion, please raise your right hand. Oppose the same sign. Motion carries. Item number 24 is discussion and possible action concerning the possible sale of Laredo Street right of way uh, west of High Meadow. And Mayor. I believe we need to dismiss the item. Yes, Mayor. Excuse me. I, I move to dismiss agenda item. Second. It's moved, seconded to dismiss agenda item number 24. Any discussion? None will we'll proceed to the vote. Those in favor of the motion, please raise your right hand. Post same sign. Motion carried. <coughs> item number 25 is discussion and possible action concerning case 15 01 0064 CVA. Mayor. Mr. Gagos. I move that we direct the city attorney to proceed as discussed in executive session concerning case number 15. Zero one zero zero six four CVN. Second. It's been moved and seconded to direct the city attorney to proceed as directed in executive session concerning case number fifteen dash zero one zero zero six four dash CVA. Any discussion? Uh. None. Proceed to the vote. Those in favor, please raise your right hand. Post same sign. Motion carries. Item number twenty six. Uh, no action required. Mayor. Yes. I move to dismiss agenda item number 26. Mr. Best seconded. It's moved and seconded to uh, dismiss agenda item number 26. Any discussion? None will proceed to the vote. Those in favor of the motion, please raise your right hand. Post the same sign. I'm motion carries. That. Mr. Best, uh, item number 27 is review of the bills. Sir. No, sir. No. Nope, there's none. We'll proceed to agenda item 28. Move to adjourn. Adjourn second. It's been moved and second that we adjourn. All those in favor of the motion, please raise your right hand. Post the same sign. Meeting is adjourned at 9 24 p.m.